So that brings us to the end of day two. Um, I wondered if, um, Mark, you don't mind just flicking to the sponsors slide as well, just while I do a wrap up of everything um, from day two. It's not urgent, it'd just be nice to have the sponsors slide up. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much to all of our generous sponsors. I will briefly name them um, just now. So Bywater Solutions, Equinox Open Library Initiative, EBSCO and Catalyst IT. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Linux Australia, PTFS Europe, FE Technologies and Internet NZ. Thank you, thank you. And Libriotech, the Library Bar, Flamingo and Beatnik Publishing um, who've been sponsoring the books we've been giving away as gifts. Thank you all so much for your generous support that helps us keep this conference free for everyone. So I am going to briefly wrap up what we covered today um, before we all head off for the day, the night, the morning, wherever we may be. So we started this morning with the 1999 Kohar Project Team. I've not seen the 1999 song, but we started with the 1999 Kohar Project Team, Rosalie Blake, Rachel Hamilton-Williams and Chris Cormack. And um, I think some of it was really awesome to see Rachel and Rosalie alongside Chris to hear the origin story. I heard some of the same anecdotes maybe told a little more truthfully. So um, yeah, I'll remember that. <laughs> I have to remember whose anecdotes I'm going to tell next time. Um, and they pushed us further to go, wow, we've got this system and um, what, how else can we extend the values of um, giving and sharing and caring for our communities into the other work we do? And so we heard about some, well, we, we were given a, um, well, you say a widow, thrown down a, a challenge to um think sustainably in our libraries more holistically than just our software, which is something everyone who has already adopted Koha has taken a big step to achieving. So thank you so much to this morning's keynotes. Um, we moved on to a recorded talk from Sonia Boy, and I was really looking forward to hearing about how they had implemented the rules around the GDPR using Koha because it's something I had n always thought I should know more about but never felt compelled to read about if I'm honest with myself. So I really appreciated Sonia's talk and I also really loved the way she managed to um, superimpose herself on some little scenes and we really got to feel um, her as a presenter as well as see where she is and um, what she's been working on. Uh, after that, we presented the Koha Kong community video, which has been tweeted out from the N at NZ Koha account. So if you missed the video, um, you can go and watch it. It's only a few minutes long, and it's just a warm expression of some of from some of the Koha libraries and librarians around the world. Um, after morning tea, uh, we had heard from Caroline Sula Rose. Uh, who talked about a catalogue that she has created for cataloguing Koha resources, in particular starting with plugins, um, but could potentially be ca cataloguing all kinds of Koha resources that we could share in. And Caroline um, would love to hear from any librarians that would be interested in helping the efforts towards cataloguing more stuff about Koha for us all to use as a community. Uh, following Caroline, we had a great... Um, sort of work, I don't know how she met, well I do, we all saw how Christina managed to do it. Christina Hupner um, gave us a presentation called Stronger Through Integration and without it being a presentation managed to encourage us to write this wonderful list of um, ways that Koha is already stronger through integration and ways that we would like it to be um, stronger or more integrated in the future and um, I encourage you to take a look at the Padlet. If you watch Christina's presentation there's a um, link to a Padlet online where we all um, jotted down some ideas and that was from people both in the room and listening so we can keep adding to that Padlet and thinking about those ideas for the future. Uh, following Christina, Shur Afzal Khan um, gave us a live presentation from Pakistan. It was four in the morning when he started and it was absolutely wonderful to hear about his study um, on the perceptions of Koha in Pakistan and um, fascinating for us to hear what they are and in some cases where they, they might be the flip side from what we know to um, how Koha is perceived in another place. I think it can only remind us that our experiences shape everything we do 
and everything we know and we can never assume that we know what we know because someone else experiences the exact same thing in an opposite way. So thank you, Chef Zaka Khan, for that. It was, um, it was wonderful. Following uh, lunch, we had a lovely lunch out, and following that, uh, Michael Kennedy Stevens gave us a talk called A Patron, a Librarian, and a, and a Developer Walk Into a Bar. And her talk was focused on the ways that the patron, the librarian, and the, de and the developer are all needed to um, have a successful collaboration and future for Koha. And um, the way she talked us through that was really wonderful and I hope will help a lot of people think about um, the ways they can foster stronger relationships between those three groups or those three kinds of people and to um, strengthen what they're doing in their libraries. Uh, next up we had um, a talk titled Unique Koha Cooperation and the pre presenters were Ari Makiranta um, for, from Koha Suomi Limited and Isapeka Kisitalo from the National Library of Finland. Um, and we were all a bit gobsmacked here in New Zealand because the way they describe the, the consortia they are running and how they work together and keep in constant communication and actually make change and just keep working towards a better experience and a better koha for all of their libraries was stunning. So everyone watch that one um, and then do some doing because it sounds like they, do, they have some meetings and then they do the work. So um, yeah, we were all really impressed by what was presented and we thank you for that. Next up, we heard from Jessica Zara and Adam Brooks at Bywater Solutions. Um, around a topic, their title was Support Isn't Just Tickets, Marketing to the Believers. And um, we are, all know them from, from their YouTube content, from some of the other um, outreach they do, and they talked us through uh, their approach to marketing um, with their libraries um, or their partners and how their partners then go on to tell those stories um, of their own successes and um, koha successes too. So that was lovely. Uh, then in New Zealand we all broke for, we all had a break for afternoon tea um, and came back for the final two sessions of the day. So second to last was a lightning talk from David Nind. Um, so David is one of our documentation champions in the Koha community and his um, talk was titled Working with Messy Data and he took us through um, a very um, beginner's overview of Open Refine as a way that non-developers can tidy up their data. So um, thank you, David, for that. I think some people will be going and um, thinking about how they can do that and perhaps some libraries who don't have the money to pay for someone else to migrate their data will consider using Open Refine to do that, to tidy up their data and import it into Koha. Um, I know that some libraries around the world have done that. And it's been great to hear that theme pop up again. It came up yesterday um, around how we can support small libraries who don't have a lot of staff to um, service their koha to still use koha and be successful. So thank you, David. And last, very last of all, was Janet McGowan um, from PDFS Europe. Her title was You Say Tomato, I Say Tomato. Oh, You Say Tomato, I Say Tomato. And I wish and she wishes she was in Tamata. Um, you'll have to watch to the end of her talk to get the rest of it. Um, and yeah, so I, it, probably in the beginning of the stream, you might have heard me say that um, she had lots of great tips. Um, she'd picked only a few ways that koha can be um, customised or personalised to individual libraries. Uh, she put emphasis on the things that librarians can do themselves, or you know, super librarians or systems librarians or whoever it is who does that job. Um, on the koha you use. So lots of different things we can do and also some nice examples of where we used to do it a little bit of a tricky way and now we've got a nice system preference in koha and we can do it a nice easy way. Um, so we also saw the progression of an idea to a fiddly code solution to a nice easy solution um, where there's been investment and a feature in koha to make that easier for everyone who uses it. So it was a big day. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you for questions, for watching. Um, please do um, chat to us, drop us messages on Twitter or in Slido if you uh, want to ask any questions 
of the presenters or just of the conference if you want to know anything at all love to hear from you and look forward to hearing your responses so we will be back here tomorrow conference day three the very last day uh, we'll be here in new zealand at 9 a.m starting with a keynote um, called Web Accessibility for Your Online Libraries. Um, he's an excellent presenter, Julius Serrano, first things tomorrow, talking about web accessibility, and I really encourage you to come, but also encourage some colleagues to um, watch that one because anyone who does anything on the internet should think about these topics, so please do share that one far and wide. So we'll see you back at 9 tomorrow. Um, and just a couple of notes for those who are here on Wednesday for the day. I just like to encourage people um, to be, excuse me, moving away from the mic, to um, be here for the Koha Awards ceremony, which is at starting at 3.40 tomorrow. Especially if you've been working on the Koha project a very long time, um, it would really like to see you there. So, um, so would really encourage people to be watching either online or in person for that tomorrow. And then for those of us in Aotearoa, New Zealand, who are going out for dinner tomorrow night, we are going to meet, we're just going to, the conference finishes at five tomorrow, so we're going to just head off together at five o'clock and go and have a um, cocktail at the library bar, which the library bar sponsored us for, and then, um, so we imagine we'll get there sometime from 5.30, the organisers might be a little later because we're packing up, but 5.45 maybe. Um, and then we'll head out to dinner from there. So we'll make sure everyone who's coming knows where we're going for dinner. We haven't organised that yet. We just have kept that cruisy, but we're looking forward to it. Okay, good night, everybody, and we'll see you back tomorrow. Thank you, Jeff.